Before starting work on a Weatherby Epsicoat silicon render system, a U-value should be calculated for the existing property structure and a suitable insulation material and thickness selected to satisfy any design criteria and current building regulations. Pull-out tests are also required. These measure the pull-out strength of a fixing, assessing its suitability for the substrate and ensures the correct loading design. Only then is it possible to determine the appropriate fixing type, length and number per square metre required. A Weatherby specification should always be sourced for further information on materials and application methods to be used. Copies of Weatherby detailed drawings for the silicone render system should also be obtained to ensure all details are correctly installed. Before applying external wall insulation directly to a masonry or rendered surface, brush down the substrate to remove any friable material, algae or lichen and, where required, apply Weatherby's biocidal wash in preparation for the new works. Any full depth surface profile should be firmly attached and a suitable base rail installed at approximately 150 mm above ground level. Take care not to bridge the damp proof course. The base rail profile type is determined by the insulation thickness and should be installed at a maximum of 300 mm centres and 50 mm from each end using approved Weatherby fixings. Where verge trims are required, these must be installed in accordance with the Weatherby specification, including a sealing tape and silicone sealant to ensure the system is protected. The verge trim must be cut and bent into place at the gable apex to prevent an exposed joint at this point. On low-rise applications, bedding adhesive is only required to level insulation boards on uneven substrates. However, it should always be used for fully bedding the boards on all high-rise applications. Bedding adhesive is applied in a continuous line around the perimeter of the board, with six additional dabs of adhesive distributed uniformly over the remaining surface. Alternatively, for fully bedded applications, the adhesive is applied over the entire face of the insulation board using a notched trowel. Start by placing the first insulation board on the base rail at a corner of the building, flush to the perpendicular wall. This should be secured with the approved Weatherby mechanical fixings determined by the pull-out test at a rate of 5 per board in accordance with the Weatherby fixing pattern included in the project specification. Continue to place additional boards ensuring a staggered laying pattern is adhered to with all boards interleaved at external corners. The protruding edge can easily be trimmed using a saw. Additional fixings are required at 300mm centres at the external corners and around openings. All boards must be tightly butted together to eliminate thermal breaks, with door and window openings easily formed by shaping the insulation boards around the corners. Where window openings allow, to prevent cold bridging, a thinner insulation board can be used on window and door reveals and rendered to match the walls. Once all of the insulation boards are installed into the base track, the 37400 clip should be attached to the base rail. Install render surface beads where required using fir tree fixings and install any movement joints at agreed locations. When replicating structural movement joints, a minimum 6mm gap should be left between the insulation boards. The movement joint should then be installed directly in line. Install render stop beads at agreed locations. Once the insulation boards have been fully installed, Weatherby scrim adhesive should be thoroughly mixed to a pliable consistency for 3 to 5 minutes. This should then be left to settle for approximately 5 minutes and remixed to break the set before use. Corner beads should be cut to length prior to applying the scrim adhesive and laid to one side. Apply the scrim adhesive over the insulation boards to a depth of 4 to 6 mm. Once all of the insulation is covered, run a notched trowel positioned at a 45 degree angle through the base coat in preparation for the alkali resistant reinforcing mesh. The mesh should be bedded into the top third of the scrim adhesive, with the mesh kept taut and smoothed from the top down. Make sure that the mesh runs into all render beads and reveals, as this will help to fully protect the system. 
trowel over the adhesive to ensure the mesh is fully adhered. Adjacent layers of mesh should have a minimum overlap of 75 mm, with no overlaps to be placed within 150 mm of any reveal or corner. Any offcuts should be resized to 200 by 200 mm patches and used as additional stress patches for corner reinforcements. These should be bedded in at 45 degrees to all window and door openings to prevent hairline cracking. Lightly embed the corner beads into the wet scrim adhesive. The entire wall should be leveled using a leveling spatula. A clean, damp paintbrush can be used to clean off any traces of scrim adhesive from the base rail and any profiles. Once the first coat of scrim adhesive has dried, a secondary 2 to 3 mm tight leveling coat should be applied over the entire wall surface, ensuring that the mesh is fully covered. Use spatulas to achieve a completely smooth level surface. The scrim adhesive should then be allowed to stiffen before finally smoothing down using a damp dry lining sponge. After the second scrim adhesive coat has fully dried and cured, thoroughly mix the Weatherby primer and apply over the entire surface using a clean decorator's roller. Once the primer is fully dry, the silicone texture coat can then be applied. Mix the Weatherby silicone texture to a uniform consistency using a rust-free, low-speed mixer. Apply to the wall with a stainless steel trowel in a continuous motion, always working to a wet edge. The texture should be applied to the thickness of the grain size and evenly polished using a plastic trowel to create a uniform and consistent finish. To ensure colour consistency, elevations must be completed using the same manufacturer's batch number. Be sure to clean off any material that may have accidentally splashed on adjacent surfaces. Weatherby products can be difficult to remove once set and contain pigments which may stain if left to dry. Apply Weatherby EvoStick 25-year silicone sealant around openings, at system abutments and to all areas required to ensure no water ingress occurs. Your silicone insulated render system is complete. Weatherby. Creating a greener future.